The year is 1917. Henry Leland would leave General Motors. He was a key player in the original Cadillac Motor Car Company before General Motors bought it in 1909. Henry Leland wanted to make the Liberty V12 engine under government contract. General Motors President William Durant didn't really want to, but would eventually build those engines, which almost seems like he just wanted Leland gone. Anyway, Leland would start a new company with his son, Wilfred, to build the Liberty V12 engines. He would name his new company Lincoln after Abraham Lincoln, which was the first president Leland ever voted for. It's important to note that Henry Leland wasn't a spring chicken at this point in time. The company was created to produce the Liberty V12 engines which was its only source of income, tasty government subsidiaries. But when the war was over in 1919, Leland would reorganize Lincoln into a premium automotive manufacturer to rival Cadillac, Packard, Pierce Arrow. Their first car would be designed in 1920 for the 1921 model year. Lincoln would offer the L-Series under the hood, was an engine designed by Henry Leland himself, 60 degree angle V8. V8 engines or V-shaped engines during this era, most of them had cylinder banks that were offset. So one bank of cylinders wasn't in line with the other bank. In contrast, Henry Leland's design, both banks of cylinders were equal lengths and they were directly across from one another. And the reason he was able to do this is because he used a more expensive blade and fork connecting rod design. Blade and fork was a concept Leland was very familiar with because Cadillac would use the blade and fork connecting rod design on their early V8s, 1915, and would continue to use that style of connecting rod even after Leland left. With blade and fork connecting rods, the cylinders are directly across from one another. Blade and fork rods, also known as split big end rods. Fork rod is split in two at the big end, and the blade rod from opposing cylinder is thinned to fit in the gap in the fork. Henry Leland would design the L-Series Lincoln V8. The cylinder blocks and heads were interchangeable and they would fit on either side. Blocks, heads, and crankcase were all cast as separate parts. With 60 degree cylinder bank angle, fully pressurized oiling lubrication system, which wasn't common on engines during this era. 357.8, oftentimes referred to just as 358 cubic inch displacement, V8, 5.9 liters. It's good for anywhere between 81 to 90 horsepower, 2600 RPM. This is an estimate up to 185 pound feet or 250 Newton meters at 1800 RPM with a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. Compression is 4.8 to 1. Features three main bearings, Stromberg updraft carburetor, it uses three quarters inch intake valves, mechanical lifters. Years this engine was used was between 1921 through 1927. In 1922, Henry Ford, under the direction of his son, Edsel, would buy Lincoln Motor Car Company. And it was sort of a full circle moment for Ford because Harry Leland built Cadillac on the hopes and dreams of the original Henry Ford Company. And now Ford would have control of Leland's baby the Lincoln Motor Car Company. In late 1927, Lincoln would increase the bore one-eighth of an inch, bringing displacement up to 384.8 cubic inch displacement, oftentimes called 385 cubic inch displacement, V8, 6.3 liters. It's good for 90 horsepower at 2,800 RPM. This is also an estimate of 185 pound-feet, 250 Newton meters, at around 1800 RPM with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. Compression is 4.8 to 1, three main bearings, mechanical lifters. Years this engine was used was between 1928 through 1930. This engine featured reshaped combustion chambers, a counterweighted crankshaft, larger 1 and 7 eighths intake valves. Oil filter was also added. 
In 1931, this engine would get a major overhaul with more efficient manifold system. Mechanical fuel pump versus the previous ones had vacuum fuel pumps and sported an all new two barrel downdraft carburetor. Displacement was the same, 384.8 or 385 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.3 liters. It made an impressive 125 horsepower at 2,900 RPM, estimated 230 pound-feet or 311 newton meters in and around 1,800 RPM with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. Compression was up at 5.23 to 1, 5 main bearings. The years this engine was used was between 1930 through 1933. It could be found in the 1931 single-year model Model K or the 1932 through 1933 Model KA. So a bit of a side note, in 1932, Lincoln would split the Model K line into the KA and KB series. The KA got the V8, KB was V12. The V12 only made 25 more horsepower than this V8. In 1933, Lincoln would replace the KAV8 with an all new, smaller 381.7 cubic inch displacement V12. Lincoln would drop the V8 altogether, and they wouldn't make another V8 until the 337 flathead, which came out in 1948, making Lincoln the only company in the United States to offer a V12 as its only engine choices across all of their offerings. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1921 Lincoln L-Series or a 1925 Lincoln L-Series Burline or 1927 Lincoln Imperial Victoria by Fleetwood? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. On to the second scenario. 1931 Lincoln Model K or 1932 Lincoln Model KA or 1933 Lincoln Model KA. Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause that video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below, or you can always email me at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in this car community. Until next time, toodaloo! Baby, baby, under my skin. Ba ba baby, baby, under my skin. <laughs>